Welcome. This video is the fifth in a miniseries on foreign trade zone support in SAP Global Trade Services. In this episode, we will step it up and go through an end-to-end -end scenario covering the import of components, production and export of the finished goods. Unless you have already done so, we recommend you watch the introductory video on FTZ first to get a grip on key concepts and terminology. Doing so may increase your takeaway from this video. Let us begin by repeating some of the benefits of foreign trade zone support in GTS. First, it will enable a reduction in duty costs associated with the import of goods and components. It will reduce expenses associated with operating in an FTZ through system automation. And finally, your business can improve data accuracy through full integration with the back-end system of record. This video will cover three main concepts, import, production, and export. In the first section, we will perform receipts to a US FTZ within bond, a non-direct delivery. Unlike direct delivery, which creates a PTT, a permit to transfer, we create an admission document for each receipt to the zone, in our case, only one. When running an FTZ, components and semi-finished products can be consumed in production. To get a transparent view of the stock of your components currently in production, we introduce a new stock category, work in progress. The VIP stock gets built up whenever an FTZ component is part of a goods issue for production. The VIP stock is reduced when the finished or semi-finished product leaves the zone. VIP does not influence the other stock numbers available. This is because they show the stock available from a customs authority's perspective, whereas the VIP stock is the company's internal perspective. All goods issues, domestic or destined for export, are collected in GTS and processed together to FTZ closing portions. A closing portion is a link to the original entry into the FTZ. For example, an export declaration will be created with components, semi-finished products or finished products by an export invoice in ERP. The existing FTZ closing portions from the processing of the goods issues will be assigned to the export customs declaration by the system. Let us look at this through an example. We will order two components from a supplier in Denmark. Then, they will be put into our FTZ. Subsequently, some of them will be consumed through production. The finished goods will, in turn, be exported to Colombia. Upon the arrival of imported goods, we will create a declaration before goods receipt, allowing us to move the goods to the FTZ. In our first section, we will use a few apps to make the preceding documents before generating the declaration and the admission document. We will perform some administrative tasks before showing the changes in the FTZ inventory. In the midsection, we will release some of the newly imported components into production. We will then create a goods receipt of the finished goods from production, run a few administrative tasks and observe the effect on the FTZ inventory. In the third and last section, we will create an export sale to Colombia consisting of the finished goods, make the necessary export declaration and assign closing portions before we look at the FTZ inventory again. To kick off this scenario, we begin by creating a purchase order. We do so by opening the Create Purchase Order app. From our supplier in Denmark, we order two different materials. We collect 10 of both products. Both of them are destined for our FTZ in San Francisco. As we finalize and save the order, we note the PO number. We will need that later. The next step is to create the inbound delivery. This will typically happen as the organization prepares to receive the purchased goods. This is done through the Create Inbound Delivery app. We use the newly created purchase order as a reference. When we save the inbound delivery, we note the inbound delivery number. We will soon need that too. As our third step, we will create a customs waybill manually through the Create Customs Waybill app. APIs enable automatic creation based on waybill information from the freight forwarders. In our example, we will do it manually. Some data elements are example data only for illustrative purposes. The Customs Waybill lets you record all transportation-specific data, such as the waybill number and the shipment data, which includes information about the shipments in a container and dates of arrival. With this information and the data from purchase orders and inbound deliveries, you have a broad range of data for creating a customs declaration before goods receipt. In the waybill, we also register relevant business partners such as the consignee, consigner and freight forwarder. In the customs waybill, we connect the freight forwarder's waybill with each line item on one or more purchase orders or inbound deliveries. This establishes the foundation for the efficient creation of custom shipments by utilizing data elements from all three preceding documents. Since we have two line items, we need to connect them to the same customs waybill.
With the three documents available in GTS, we use the Create Customs Declaration prior to Goods Receipt app to create our pre-declaration. We use the PO number from earlier as selection criteria. In the work list, we select both line items. Then, we take a quick look at the item line attributes before we press Customs Declaration and create the admission document. We can trigger the necessary communication with Customs in the Declaration and under the Communication tab. Under Document Flow, we can see the entire audit trail of preceding ERP and GTS documents and how they are connected. With the customs work done, we can move and receive the goods. In our case, we record the goods receipt into the FTZ using the Change in Bound Delivery app. Before stock becomes visible to us, we need to run the process stock receipts into Foreign Trade Zone app, typically running in the background every 15 minutes. Secondly, we must run the post stock to Foreign Trade Zone app. This is also a typical background job, recommended to run once daily. With the goods receipt processed and posted, we open the display stock overview of Foreign Trade Zone app. When filtering the two products recently acquired from Denmark, we can see that stocks amount to 10,010, all duty unpaid privileged foreign status. Furthermore, a look in the receipt issue list for one of the items shows the details for our last transaction, with reference to the newly created admission document. We are now entering the second and the midsection of our scenario. We use the Goods Movement Receipt app and a reference document to release five units of each newly procured and imported item to production. The items will be used to produce five smart TV monitors. As we post the goods issue, we note down the material document number. We return to the display stock overview for Foreign Trade Zone app and observe that the total stock for both the camcorder and the video monitor is unchanged. However, we can see that five units are now in VIP stock. We look at the work in progress list for the camcorder and recognize the newly created material number. To receive the produced smart TV monitors, we revisit the goods movement receipt app. Also, this time we use a reference document as aid. As we post the goods receipt, we once more note down the material document number. Before any stock changes become visible to us, we must once more run the process stock receipts into Foreign Trade Zone app. And just as before, we must also run the post stock to Foreign Trade Zone app. Both steps usually are scheduled background jobs. We open the display stock overview of Foreign Trade Zone app again. Our two components still have five units each in VIP status, as they will leave the status only when the finished items leave the zone. However, we can see that we have five smart TV monitors in stock. The receipt issue list confirms they originate from our receipt from production. It's time for the third and the last section of our scenario. We will now export the five newly created smart TV monitors by creating a sales order for one of our customers in Colombia. With the sales order saved, we use the Create Outbound Delivery app to create the subsequent outbound delivery. We use the Change Outbound Delivery app to post the goods issue. With goods issue posted, we use the Proce stock issues from FTZ app to reflect it in the stock overview. With the stock overview updated, we see that our two components no longer hold stock in work in progress status. We also see that the quantity in stock has been reduced by 5. A look at the receipt issue list confirms the reason is an export. To progress with the export, we use the Create Billing Document app. This will trigger the creation of the export declaration. To document the consumption of the FTZ components, it is necessary to assign the relevant closing portions to each export declaration. The Assign Closing Portions to Customs Export Declarations app does that. We return one last time to the Display Stock Overview of Foreign Trade Zone app. In the work list, we recognize the two components. Next, we look at the Receipt Issue list for the camcorder. From the issue entry, we can jump directly to the Export Declaration for the Smart TV Monitor. The Export Declaration contains a complete audit trail to the preceding ERP documents. But, more importantly, on the item level, 
It includes the relevant closing portions. Mission accomplished. Let us end by repeating some of the benefits of foreign trade zone support in GTS. First, it will enable a reduction in duty costs associated with the import of goods and components. It will reduce expenses associated with operating in an FTZ through system automation. And finally, your business can improve data accuracy through full integration with the back-end system of record. The views, information or opinions expressed are solely those of the individuals involved and not those of the individual's employer, or any other group or individual. Thanks a lot for watching. Please comment, like and subscribe. More videos like this are coming shortly. See you then.